Zitty. Welcome back to Model Zitty, the podcast. It's your girl Pojo. I'm so excited for my very special guest today, my dear friend, Natalia Castaner Calvani. Hello, 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 hello. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I would like to first start by apologizing for making you do an ASMR intro. No, it's honestly not. I, the thing is, it's, it's actually kind of funny. It's funny Sorry. because this isn't something that you necessarily enjoy. No. So I'm misophonic. N- which not that many people really know what that means. Yeah, what does is, that mean? A lot of people don't really understand it because there's not enough research done on it. And mm. it's not something that's acknowledged by like the world of psychology. Like it's not recognized in the D- the DSM, any of the editions. Oh, wow. Basically the, the, in simple terms, like the definition, if you look it up on Google is like the hatred of sound, which is kind of misleading because it makes you, it makes it sound like somebody that is misophonic just doesn't like sound, right. which is not necessarily the case. It's literally that your, your brain processes sound differently than most people and certain sounds trigger you. Right. So I actually did a research paper on it for my class and it was interesting because there's like debates on if it's um, due to trauma, if it's due to anxiety, if it's like a compulsive, some sort of compulsive disorder. So it's like there's so many ends of the spectrum of like where it can lie on. Right. Um, but yeah, it just basically means that sound just bothers me depending on what it is. So like for me, chewing, tapping, pens clicking, like little things like that that people don't really think about. But it's cr- I can literally just talk about it all day because I could literally be in a restaurant, for example, and I could be just having a great conversation and it could be so busy and loud in there and I can just kind of like dismantle all the noise around me. Right. I could like hear somebody on the opposite end of the room like clanking on something or like chewing really loudly and I just freak out. It's kind of like your flight or fight mode kicks in and you just literally Over feel sound. like it, you just become so overstimulated uh, by your environment that you, you literally can't handle it and then it just like you get aggressive and you get upset and like growing up I would get into so many fights with oh my, my family and they would just be like you're so problematic and I'm like I don't know what's wrong with me and well so it's like a real up. it's a real thing and like you don't I mean you shouldn't be ashamed of it or worry about it because yeah. in truth it's like people need to know it exists and it's funny because it's not funny but it's mm-hmm. funny that ASMR is something that's so relaxing to so many people and it can be such a trigger for you well that's the interesting part is that some people that are misophonic get into specific types of ASMR and it helps them so it's wow. such a personal thing for everybody yeah that like when i was on my friend's youtube channel for her asmr video i didn't get bothered by the sounds because they weren't they weren't triggering to me because everything was just like hair right exactly so i don't know it was really it was really interesting to be placed in that position because i thought i was gonna hate it but any other sort of asmr i can't stand so that's so interesting (laughs) yeah like well, it's did you crazy. like your mochi at least? Like, what were your thoughts? So yeah. this was your first time having mochi, which is big. So, uh, yeah. So I've always wanted to try it. Never found the opportunity. We tried it. It was like soupy consistency because it was pretty. It melted down. It was melted down. So I only got to try one, which was the mango one. But with that being said, it was so, so, so good. And it just. Is it ri- like, how did you like the flavor? Was it good? I mean, I had tasted, one of the matcha ones. It just tasted like summertime. Yes. And the consistency was so creamy. And I know the description says that there's like honey mango, bold, fruity, rich, and refreshing. And that's basically what it awesome. literally what it was. So it was really nice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I'm really impressed by this mochi doki. So shout, shout out, out mochi doki. Yeah, shout out mochi doki. Thanks for making vegan stuff. And it's artisan. It's like not, you know, it's not bullshit. It's mm-hmm. really, really awesome. So happy about that. Also, we had to have a little like wine and dine moment yeah. because we're celebrating you and I being reunited, which is it's big. been it's been is it a year, right? It's been like a pandemic. January 2020. Yeah. Who would have thought we would have gone that long without seeing each other? I keep Sad. telling 
Phoebe that all of my relationships are long distance in my <laughs> life, which it's so which true, can though. be sad to some, but I don't mind it because I feel like every single time I see my friends, I'm just it doesn't feel like we've been apart. No, and I f- we communicate well too. Exactly. It's like we go on FaceTime. We're not going to, we know we're not going to be on the phone for half an hour. We're going to at least be on the phone for like two hours three, minimum. Like three, uh, literally like we max out at three or four. Yeah. And we just get that. <laughs> we just get that serotonin that we need. And As then we we're should. like, okay, we'll see you next time. <laughs> see you next year. We're drinking some margins. Chenin Blanc 2020. This is their skin fermented wine. This is actually a wine in the U S. So it's a California based winery. What year is it from? This is, Last I'm year's asking mix. that because I want to sound like I'm educated on wine. <laughs> so the reason I actually we chose wine is because I have a pretty good history of wine tasting and I love wine and Natalia loves wine, but I really want to see how she adapts her palate you to know, this wine and what she thinks of it. It's funny. My favorite wine, I don't know the brand of it. It's seven euro. The thing is, is that with me, I like fruity tasting things mm-hmm. and I find that a lot of alcohol is bitter for me. Yeah. Like, for example, no hate to anybody that drinks White Claw, but everybody hypes up White Claw. And I was like, you know what? Let me taste this. It's going to probably taste so delicious because of the flavors. I literally felt like I was drinking acetone, like nail acetone. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. I'll stick to my mics hard <laughs> and my smear not happily. There you go. Um, but I'm excited to try this. I feel like I need to extend my palate a little bit. Oh, no. This is going to be a fun one. And shout out margins. So we're excited to try it. Shout out, And shout out to Betsy for the beautiful little oh, purple glass I'm going to You know Mama Pojo. <laughs> Mama Pojo really has the craziest glass selection. So, so this one though reminds me of you that's why i think it's perfect for this i like the color of it shall we cheers <gasps> wait oh my god i'm so nervous don't okay. be nervous i'm excited to see what you think wine lovers please do not hate on me don't for the lack us. of education i'm gonna i'm gonna try my best okay here we go should i sip it in the mic sure <laughs> mm. we both did it that way so i'm wondering if you hate this it's it's not bad. It's not as bad as I thought. It's not is as it, bitter as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was bitter off the bat, but it's not. It's I more, actually it's like more it. tart. No? Yeah, I'm probably going to drink this and you're going to probably find me a little bit tipsy. But, That's fine. Hey. But it tastes really good. I'm going to just describe some thing, notes I'm getting from it. Now, here's the thing with wine tasting, in my opinion, right? I am not a psalm, so I cannot bit you out here saying anything. It's all about whatever comes to mind. Like, there should be no filter mm-hmm. on what you think. There's no wrong answer here off the nose this one feels a little bit dry to me Mm -hmm. but not like it is dry but it's not compared to other things i've tried it's not as drying exactly (laughs) this is so i'm getting like tart i'm getting green apple green apple i'm getting a little bit of birch i know that's kind of like off no no no. i'm those are literally like i'm trying to pick (laughs) up on things we've got bianca in the house she's just like girl what well because she knows i don't drink so so, wait give me one give me one word and it could be a food it could be a green apple you like green apple okay that's like the only thing that i can and probably like um smooth this is gonna sound really weird but like (laughs) like like, um (laughs) what is it called um wood panels (laughs) No, that's not wrong. That's not wrong. wrong. No, no. I don't want to sound rude because I'm not. I'm trying to like compliment it, but complimenting wine is so weird. It's not like you can be like, it tastes so good. <laughs> you, know, you have to like, you have to, you know, I've heard people in videos mm-hmm. being like, I can taste the soil and the types of rocks. And yeah, all people say, hey, you're like, sweetie, I don't <laughs> taste shit. <laughs> <laughs> sweetie, all I taste is alcohol. <laughs> you're like, I'm getting acetone and grapes She's like from this. laughing so hard at me. <laughs> I want to start with how we met but then Mm -hmm. further than that what got you there and how you started modeling because we met in a really fun situation yeah I was actually really excited the leading up to when we met because I was in high school I can't remember I was a sophomore junior year sorry it kind of like blurs all together yeah but I got invited to the who's who event this was w mag right from w mag and I remember yeah I think I was 17 when that happened but as for starting up with my modeling I when I was 15 what had happened was is that my sister wanted to get into photography and I remember she me and her were just talking and she we basically well she kind of like asked me like oh like let me just use you as like a reference because she wants to get into like portraits and stuff and obviously you know she was like 17 and what type of 17 year old knows how to find the right people especially in the suburbs so well, yeah you gotta start i mean you're also like the perfect person to do because you're like you know what i actually like taking photos and stuff yeah so. I, and the thing is i think i needed it also because i was so shy that i kind of needed that to get out of my bubble and um yeah i just thought it was a good opportunity i know that at first i was kind of 
again not against it but like because i had that shyness i was like it's not gonna work just like being very pessimistic like oh, it's not gonna look good blah, blah 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 and then we kind of just started taking pictures we would go to like the museum the museum nearby and take photos we'd go to parks and stuff and then slowly she s- would like reach out to little brands and stuff and they would send us things and um yeah so we kind of just built it on that and then we both kind of came to this agreement or not agreement but like conclusion that if we wanted to make things work for ourselves we needed to be on social media so then i was like okay let's make an let's make our instagram accounts because it was at that time where i think the industry was like shifting to social media like they were actually starting to care about like the followers and all this stuff yeah so bianca had like her tumblr account and she would just upload photos of us and a few of them went viral and so they kind of started circulating back to our social media accounts and then from then on we just got a lot of attention yeah and so at that time a lot of agencies started reaching out to me and they would be like really the biggest agencies but then you know i was like 16 at the time 15 16 and they would be like oh how tall are you blah 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 and i'd be like i'm five seven and they literally would be like okay let us know when you grow a little bit as if like my genetics like you're gonna grow more yeah right? i was like okay guys this is kind of stupid but we just kept doing our thing and then eventually my agency next with who i'm still with reached out to me and we were in contact and we did a facetime call and literally as soon as we hung up they sent over the contract and i like publicly like went on their roster in like november of 2016 i think but before then it was just kind of like us two and yeah it was really interesting because at that point when i did start getting a lot of attention through my socials it was such a weird thing because people were really nasty like i had a really hard time those first like two and a half years Mm -hmm. because people were just and i've come to the conclusion i think people were just threatened of somebody that was a little bit different not saying that i'm you know like anything special but i guess to some people and by some people i'm referring to like weird men and like white people nosy that were like hating yeah because they would say the rudest shit like can i can i say some of this if if it's too comfortable i'll say if it's if it's too like vulgar you can like cut it out yeah but um they would they would be my dms like you you man you're you deserve to get raped Mm -hmm. and like um you know i hope someone finds you and kills you they would call me trans they would like say such like they're trying to hurt you yeah also like with the trans thing it's like trying to like is that gonna hurt you like it just like so it was just like very 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 like invasive yeah. and you know as a 15 year old 16 year old like l- hearing this shit it was like what the hell did i do you're to literally you? a child I, yeah i'm a literally a child and you're literally wishing the worst things on me because of how i look like and that's what really pisses me off is the fact that social media is so everybody on social media thinks that they're entitled to just be assholes because you can yeah. and i've always had that issue and especially at that time i really couldn't handle it and it made me really, really insecure. Um, well, but I it don't kind think of... anyone's supposed to have to deal with comments like that. Yeah. Like, that's actually just a weird thing that people are subject to due to social media. Mm-hmm. And we were, we were never conditioned to have to deal with hate like that prior mm-hmm. to social media. Yeah, because it's like, if you're in high school, like, people can say things about people you. Like, just bully, to be stupid. But, it's like... but for, to have, like, random people on social media literally wishing you death threats and, you know, wishing that somebody would essentially assault you, it's like or kill you because i'm <laughs> what because i'm me because i'm hairy like that because that's literally the argument is that everybody hated how hairy i was and it's really annoying because back home hairiness is not anything that really phases anybody like the girls don't shave their arms so i remember i started shaving my arms when i was nine because girls would say comments to me at school and i remember i was at my i'll never forget this i was at my cousin's house and they like grabbed my arms and they were like they were basically saying like why do you like where's your arm hair like why do you shave it and i was like i don't because i just like i don't know it's just like not nice and they're they're like that's so weird like you should grow back and so it's just really interesting right yeah it's just like the the differences yeah and so the, the the differences in culture is so crazy and so nowadays it really frustrates me when i see that 
for example, girls that look like Cara Delevingne are praised for mm-hmm. like their hairiness and their bushiness and blah, 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 blah. I'm not, and here's the thing. I'm not like some, I'm not like the martyr of eyebrows. I'm not claiming anything, but I do get bothered when I see certain people kind of, I don't know. I just don't like the fact that there's like a discrepancy between people specifically like girls that look like that if yeah, that makes well, sense I think, like, it, when, I think I know what you mean it's like the the glamorization of yeah, it of in like, western beauty standards yeah. but then if you culturally come from a place where that's considered normal mm-hmm. and it's abnormal in western culture mm-hmm. you get scrutinized and told you should die yeah like that's not actually so yeah so it, <laughs> that's not right mm-hmm. like that doesn't make sense and it's it has to be painful to see people who are also celebrity mm-hmm. get like kind of put on a pedestal and be glamorized for that same thing that you've been told you should die for yeah and what sucks is that also this randomly popped into my mind but now it's a, it's kind of annoying actually because if you search up like thick eyebrows or eyebrows on google i'm one of the first 10 photos and um it's annoying because a lot of i've actually come across a lot of big youtubers who will do like i'll never forget oh. shane dawson's boyfriend I felt disrespected because Shane Dawson's boyfriend was doing a Q and a and okay, let me backtrack. So somebody on Twitter DM me being like, Oh my God, you were in what's his name? Ryland's vi- video. And I was like, Oh my God, no way. Like I got nervous. This was like, I love, this is at the, like before the cancellation. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I love them. Like, blah, 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 blah. Like, and so I like go on the video and it was actually kind of funny watching it, but it did piss me off because he was answering a Q and a and something was about like eyebrows and he posted a picture of my eyebrows and be like, cut, cut me, cut me out. So it was this, but I know that's my face. I, that was my Duh. selfie. <laughs> and um, he, he did that. And he put like this really dramatic sound effect in the background. My sister was laughing because it was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> it was like a screaming, <laughs> like an audio of a girl screaming, like not going to lie. That shit was pretty creative, but like, fuck you. <laughs> and um, so I felt really disrespected. And not only that, but like, I was thinking about it from a fan's perspective. Like, imagine if there were other girls that looked up to him or guys that looked Mm -hmm. up to him and, like, they also kind of basically attacked... He basically attacked them for having the same characteristics. Um, But, yeah, I was just really pissed off because I've come across a lot of content where people will use my pictures and... They just don't even think twice about it. They just find these things and they don't even bother. Well, to like, use you as an example for something that they're like, they're that is unattractive. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're entitled. Here's the thing. You're entitled to your opinions. Like everybody has different opinions on beauty. What I might think is the most beautiful person or thing. You might think the complete opposite and yeah. vice versa. And that's fine. But I just think that there should be a level of respect. Yeah. Because no why I mean, not like to me i feel like your journey in modeling and your experience because you started online of course like mm-hmm. with those photos that brought you to your agency but like you were pre-exposed to so much judgment mm-hmm. before you even began working mm-hmm. which like conditions you to feel some type of way like not to put natalia on blast but i catch her saying things sometimes that are self oh yeah very self-deprecating and um i've been called out literally everybody family members boyfriends friend boyfriend friends <laughs> like people yeah it is pretty annoying and i'll catch myself doing it too and i'm like and i'll literally think in my head like why did i just say that like i need to stop it's it's almost like by habit but yeah. in truth like i don't think you i don't even know if you necessarily mean it but i think you probably were conditioned to say things because it's like it's almost like if we shoot ourselves down first mm-hmm. no one can hurt us and then yeah. it's like i feel like i'm i mean i feel that way with like things that comments i've received in the past mm-hmm. it's like i'm numb to what people think of me yeah. whether that's because of the way I think of myself mm-hmm. or because of the way I've conditioned myself to be confident. Mm-hmm. But either way, it kind of like rolls off your back in a different yeah. way. Now it's like we can talk about it all day and obviously we're mm-hmm. here to talk about it. But well, I mean, yeah. the thing that's interesting is that like I know that I'm a bad bitch. Like I know I'm fine. I know I'm, you know, I'm talented and I'm smart and I'm pretty like it's just that sometimes when I don't know, I think it's just like a habit that I've created ever since I was young which is kind of frustrating because it's like you go 21 years or probably a little less because you don't do that when you're a baby, but like you go through all of your life, like thinking certain things about yourself that it, it, it's a, it's very difficult to unlearn that. Yeah. And so, um, but with like comments and stuff now, I kind of, I laugh at it and I'm just kind of like, whatever, like it is what it is. I can't please everybody. So I've learned to just be comfortable with myself in that. Um, I just I think I, confidence is like the only thing because like yeah. I know that nothing I know that I'm I'm perfect in my own way or 
you know, not like per- no one's perfect, but you know what I mean? Like I'm content with myself. I'm happy with myself, right. but I think there's just, it's just a lack of confidence. And I think that's where like sometimes the self deprecating comes in, you know? Yeah. Cause sometimes absolutely. I feel like I'm not, um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be, uh, how do I explain it? Like, I don't, I shouldn't feel confident about things if that makes sense or like undeserving basically mm, but that's so, not the case yeah. i know i know and i just feel like i need to listen to everybody around me more because everybody says the complete opposite but sometimes i feel like everyone's lying to me <laughs> just to be nice no but, no but the truth is like well we're on all, all honest people mm-hmm. and oh i know also I, yeah. we love you because we love who you are and all these things about mm-hmm. you so like we're obviously going to stand up for that like i find that too like if i get in my head i call any of you guys mm-hmm. and then you guys are like get off that ledge yeah. you're fine yeah. and it's actually important to have mm-hmm. that so you need people around we all do yeah it's really but i sure. but i'm a, but i'm pretty happy though that, that i am very comfortable like speaking out about things that might be like flaws or might be you know a little uncomforting just because i feel like it normalizes these things it because i feel like on social media for example i've just like I, it's so hard for me to come across like authentic people because you're everything that you're you're seeing everything that is just fabricated you're mm-hmm. just seeing someone's perfect life and someone's perfect body and someone's perfect this and this and that like just perfection that sometimes it's a little overwhelming and like stressful because it's like i just want to see something that's not like the other day i posted a video of me on tiktok crying and it, that was like the first thing that came to my head which is interesting because i was like out of all the ways that i could express my sadness i chose to do it on tiktok but i think the reason why i did that is because i wanted to show some sort of honesty on one of my platforms because i catch myself also some i would say that on instagram I, i'm a little less personable which i still try to be in comparison to like twitter right i go all out on twitter i love twitter um but yeah, I decided, I was like, I'm just going to post a video of me crying on TikTok. And so many people were so sweet. And so many people were telling me like, oh my God, I relate to this. I'm so, you know, thank you for saying this, blah, blah, blah. Like, it'll be okay. And I just like, I felt comforted because sometimes you just feel like I want to talk to somebody, but I don't necessarily want to, like, there's nobody that I specifically want to talk to. Yeah, I just exactly. want somebody to listen to me. So. Right. Well, it's valid. It's interesting. And I think it's better than projecting like negative stuff on the line. Oh, like hell no. Here's do. the thing. I'm like... I try to advocate kindness online whenever I can because I just like I love I get so much enjoyment out of commenting under people's photos that I follow just boosting them because it just makes me happy because I'm like I don't know if they're having a bad day and I don't even know if my comment might make them feel a little bit better but I'm still gonna let them know that like they look great or like that this is amazing because it just it just gives me it makes me feel happy inside knowing that I'm like putting that good energy out into the universe even if it's towards somebody i don't even know yeah. like i'll have random people comment under my photos just being really sweet to me and i'll just go and like like their pictures and comment on them and they'll dm me being like oh my god you're you liking my photos made me so happy and i'm like i don't i didn't know that i could do that but i really appreciate that because like, i don't know it's just nice it's like uh you give what you get mm-hmm. and you get what you give yeah <laughs> but i, I kind of want to go backwards a little bit so like you are from puerto rico mm-hmm. you, your family moved to virginia mm-hmm. so you have this like kind of like back and forth life mm-hmm. but i feel like there's got to be different approaches mm-hmm. to the work you do now from both angles and it's kind of i mean i'm seeing that in the way you talk about like what you find beautiful and mm-hmm. like you normalizing your beauty and feeling like identifying with that Mm -hmm. where do you think that like differentiation is between the two places like there's an american interpretation and you know southern american interpretation of modeling and then Mm -hmm. there's like the puerto rican like what's what have you been influenced by and like how do you feel like those differ so okay i feel like i need to explain this whole rundown before i get into it so when i moved when i moved to virginia i was about four years old and it was right when i was going to start kindergarten um and so it was really I still remember the first winter that we experienced and I was so confused I was like I didn't know it was possible to get this cold because it's like you're used to just being outside all day in like 80 90 degree weather and just in the sun and you know with my cousins and everything and my family so then to move to Virginia I just remember it it felt very cold and like gloomy and I just wasn't happy and I remember the first day of um, elementary school, my mom dropped me off and I was really confused and I felt very overwhelmed. And I still remember my teacher who who came up to me and I'll never forget this. She like handed me a folder and like now I remember it. It like had my name tag and she wanted me to put my name and I didn't understand what she was saying to me. And I and I scribbled out like just random things because I just, 
you know, I didn't speak English and being placed in that position was really difficult for me because it's like you're already in those crucial years of your childhood where you're learning so much to then have to basically flip everything and then start from scratch. It just was a very confusing time period for me. And I quickly, um, you know, I was in such a diverse atmosphere that it was very overwhelming. And I did quickly like start to notice what was like, perf not preferred, but like, I just felt different. And I, I wanted to be like everybody else, you know, I wanted to be like the little cutesy, like blonde hair, blue eyed little country girl. Shit, there was this one girl who like, always had like bows in her hair and like even from like what she brought to school for lunch like everything was so perfect about her that I was like I want to be like that and so I was just in this like identity crisis for so many years to the point where I, I was I told you this a few hours ago that like I had to repeat kindergarten and I, I'd never tell that to anybody because I used to be really embarrassed of it but now I'm kind of just kind of now I kind of just think about it as like a I guess that was like my fuck you to the school. I didn't want to learn English. I didn't, I just didn't want to comprehend the information. And I was like, I remember they would just take me to ESL and I would just sit there and I would be sad and I would cry and I would just be so confused all the time. And I just didn't want to learn. And um, yeah, which really sucked. I really wish I would have been able to go to school in Puerto Rico, which is why now I'm making up for it because I'm taking Spanish classes in college. That's so, so cool. It's really exciting. Um, but back to that though, like, transitioning through all these years in school it was just it was a lot for me I I like went through a phase which probably lasted like two weeks I wanted to aim for like a year where I told people to start calling me Natalie which is so stupid damn it's that's so a f dude, no but dude if you uh, think it was, about it like I was I hated everything about myself I terrible. hated my eyes I hated my hair I hated my hairiness and like I told you I started shaving my arms when I was nine what type of nine-year-old needs to be holding a shaver like that is so sad I had to do it in secret too because my mom wouldn't let me and I remember the first time I shaved my legs I was like crying to her and she was like telling me that I should that I shouldn't do that like I'm too little but I just didn't understand it at the time yeah. and so I was just I like told my parents I wanted to be blonde at one point and they kept telling me no and then they my mom settled for like giving me two <laughs> two <laughs> they looked like the mango the mango <laughs> um liquid um it was like golden orangey yellow but like that was her trying that was them trying their best to like please me but i just tiktokers could I never would, by no, the way no tiktok could never i was the footprint i'm joking <laughs> i wasn't the footprint but um you mean blueprint or blue i always say footprint i have such a bad habit okay <laughs> you're so cute my english no no no, no you're fine but <laughs> um no but in general like i think it's sad to think about like one, you being humiliated for being in kindergarten and having to repeat it when you literally were in kindergarten. You are not a yeah. grown adult like deciding not to interpret something. Like you grew up speaking a language, you were forced to move, you are put into a completely different world, and you're like, uh, this isn't my life. Like yeah. I'm sorry. Like I'm literally in kindergarten. Yeah, it was, this it is was not sad what I because every single time, um, my grandfather like growing up inseparable. Those like I never wanted to be apart from him. Mm -hmm. So every time we would leave, it felt like I was experiencing heartbreak from like a young age because I would just feel like my heart was being ripped out of my chest because I never wanted to leave his side. Aww. So every single time we left Puerto Rico, I would be like crying and crying and crying. And I'd be su in like such a depressive state from a I young age just because I felt so comforted. And like it, even when I go back, like it just has like a sense of nostalgia. Right. It just feels like I'm back to where I was when I was little. That makes sense. Yeah. Um. But yeah, growing up, it was really difficult. And then I would say probably like towards the end of middle school is when I kind of started. No, I wasn't going to say like, no, psych. I would say like ninth grade to sophomore years when I started feeling myself because I started like with modeling and stuff. You're on social media. Also, you're introduced to so many people yeah. that, you know, you wouldn't be able to have in your environment or see in your environment. So I remember I, I started coming across models that resembled me. One in particular, I'm not saying she looks like me, but her features just stuck with me, like Blanca Padilla. She's like this Spanish model. She's beautiful. But I remember the reason why I'm so obsessed with her is her nose. Her nose had like this bump. And I remember I have a very tiny, tiny bump on my nose, but my nose was one of those things that I also didn't like back then. And I remember I was so, so obsessed with her. But then I got to a point where I was thinking to myself, like, okay, if I'm so obsessed with her and her features, why don't I like mine and then from then i from then on i kind of started appreciating all of the models that resembled me or were just different in any way because i remember like 
when I first started getting acquainted in the industry, I did find myself gravitating towards like thinking a specific type of model was pretty and like being jealous of them and wishing that I looked like them. But then I started, I like took that step back and was like, no. Mm -hmm. And so from then on, I, so I would like, I, th I'm thankful that modeling at least did do that for me. And so from then on, I've just gotten more and more confident with who I am as a person because I you know you come to the realization that you cannot change yourself like I remember being 12 years old on YouTube looking up videos like how to change your eye color and I remember there are these videos like you could probably still find them it's like if you sit outside and you and you like open your eyes and have them up towards the sunlight like your eyes will gradually get lighter that all the time. is it's terrible the I know said that? I know it's the same thing with <laughs> hair. yeah it was the same thing with hair it was like if you sit outside for a few hours at a time your hair will start lightening and especially if you put like these chemicals in it and I was like taking notes I was like I'm gonna do all of this because I want to look like I don't know who I wanted to look like but I was like I'm gonna look like somebody that's not me that's terrible that's yeah terrible but it just to me it all ties back to this identity crisis yeah. that you're talking about where it's like how do I adjust here mm -hmm. and then but when you finally see somebody that looks like you in a space that's validating mm -hmm. like what the beauty standard is and you're seeing people that are being deemed beautiful that mm -hmm. you that you look like it probably gave you the confidence to actually step into that more which yeah is big I mean your social media journey to me is so interesting and like mm -hmm. I think it's great that you had your sister Bianca by your side and stuff well and ju uh, sorry I didn't mean to cut you off but no, I had good. just thought about like it, it, the interesting aspect to it um so when people did start kind of catching on to us and really acknowledging like us as people I it was really it was really weird because all of these like articles started being written about me all these videos and all these things and they were like overnight sensation like this model's eyebrows landed her a contract like and that was all because of buzzfeed and i don't right. say that i don't say that with compliment i mean i'm happy that i was given a platform to speak on but i'm not happy with the way that it turned out because when they reached out to my sister it was under the intention that they wanted to get to know me as a person we were in that studio for i'm not even joking it felt like three or four hours me my sister and like a videographer mm -hmm. and um this woman and asking questions and um, she was asking me all of these like social political questions and personal things. But then I got really upset because when you watch the video, it's like a first of all, I think it's like a one minute, two minute video. It's so short. And most of it is like music and me kind of looking at the camera. And it basically it didn't catch anything that I stood for. My opinions as a person, like my experiences, it was literally like this girl was modeled for her eyebrows and it was like an up close stuff. It was so, so fabricated and it was it's almost objectifying it. Yes. And it was, it was just bullshit. And it really pissed me off because because of that art that because of that video, all of these other articles that were being written about me, it was the same thing written over and over again. Overnight sensation got signed because of her eyebrows. My eyebrows were never, my eyebrows were never even a conversation when I got signed. They just basically said like, you have a really beautiful look we see the potential in you let's do this it was never they never once talked to me about any specific features that i had well it's like what are you gonna do eyebrow model like you have yeah like what am i have a look that's like just your eyebrows are a part if of that's your, like, the a, case a feature of yours literally i've been modeling for over i don't know how many years like five years and not once have i ever booked anything for my eyebrows which is kind of crazy that because crazy. you would think that i would have been booked so if anybody's watching this and you need me for a campaign <laughs> i'm right here um <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> yeah so that really stressed me out because that that video blew up that video got i think like one millions or two million of, no, yeah millions. and I, the comment section it. first of all was brutal but on the other end people were getting like this false advertisement so then from then on everybody's like always dm me about that like how did you become so like successful how did you and i'm like no that's not how it works like i'm unless if you're like rich and famous and like a nepotism child that's not how it works like yeah. you have to build from the ground up i just got lucky because you know m my sister honestly helped me and yeah i think it, it was just luck but i think a lot of it was also just i actually don't know <laughs> i actually don't know i want to talk about that a little bit actually like working with bianca because mm -hmm. i think it's interesting like not a lot of people have that dynamic and for those watching the pod, we will have Bianca on very soon. Yeah, she's behind the camera right now. We're saving her episode for a very special season, so stay tuned. But 
that's not a dynamic that's very common Mm -hmm. there's very few siblings in fashion we actually happen to know a few but yeah there isn't really that dynamic but i think it's interesting that you had someone that was literally related to you Mm -hmm. managing you to an extent so how was that and do you feel like the industry i mean i know you guys very well Mm -hmm. and obviously i'm with you guys but do you feel like the industry put a strain on anything between you guys or what did you guys learn together? Cause that's a journey in itself. So in the beginning it was really fun because we both always had like 50, 50, um, I'm oh, sorry, 50, 50 say in things. And so it was always very collaborative, but then as things intensified, it did get a little, it got difficult progressively. And also because we have such strong personalities, it, it, we did butt heads a lot just because for example, like we would take pictures and she would want them to, ed- to be edited a certain way, or she liked a really particular photo. And my most popular picture is the one of me in my red turtleneck sweater that she took. And I remember we were fighting when we took that. And that was like the last photo that she that i made her take of me and then like i stormed out the room and then later i came back and i was like okay let's 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 look through the photos and i remember that photo came out blurry and she did not like it she was like i'm not doing it i'd want to do this one instead and it was like one that was similar but it just like didn't have that pizzazz but i was like no this is the photo just edit it you can make it look like um like it was taken on film like grainy and you know not everything has to be because she's all about getting the details so i was like not everything has to be crisp and clean and so that was the picture that we went with and luckily that was the picture that kind of put us on the map on tumblr pinterest um a lot of mood boards were a lot of mood board accounts were using that and like that photo is the reason why uh a lot of people like were interested in me like the first brand that was ever interested in me was this brand called lpa before i was signed and the owner of it pia she really wanted to shoot with me and she found me through that photo and so that was the case for a lot of brands like they would just i don't know there's something about that photo that they really liked it's crazy how like being viral or like something going viral can change everything yeah we see that obviously with like media moguls and stuff and like i guess models too well it's crazy because there was this one time i was in new york i forgot what i was here for but i was in zara and I'm going, I'm either going up or down the escalator. And as I was walking around, there's these two women that were looking at me and I was kind of confused. I was like, why do they, I even asked Bianca, I was like, why do they keep looking at me? I don't know if it's because they had seen me. I don't know if they have me confused with somebody else, but they keep looking at me and I like go down another level and I'm like, I realized one of them was following me and one of them comes up to me and they're Italian and the first thing that they say was you're the girl in the red sweater and i'll never forget that's it. her name is, her name is oh my sarah. god yeah so it was a sarah is her name and sarah she she's like you're the girl in the red sweater and then the other one's name is F- uh, frederica and um basically they're like we teach fa- uh, like they teach they're like fashion fashion professors i don't know they they work at a university that's about fashion yeah. but they also run this magazine called mia le journal and they were um they run it and they were like you do not they basically told me like you do not know how many students use your pictures in mood boards wow and in projects and stuff and i was like oh my god this is crazy but then on the spot they were like oh my god like we're actually here shooting the ma- the magazine cover like do you want to do it and i was like this is so bizarre like that was insane did like, you shoot it yeah oh I, yeah, I got it we it, the, and the, the shoot was at nighttime it was in times square we shot with like the little off-brand mickey my mickey mouse mickey mice's mickey mouse, <laughs> mickey mickey mouse. mice. you're not <laughs> mickey wrong mouse characters and like we were on the steps and we were shooting on broadway it was crazy it was wow. so fun I, I think that was probably like my one of my funnest funnest one of my favorite photo shoots that's was fun. so insane yeah do you feel like I mean, I mean, that's something that is so absurd. Like, that's a pretty crazy industry I story. I mean, do you have any other, like, insane, like, memorable things that have happened on set or, like, ways that things have come about? I've had shitty things happen. I um, mean, hi. <laughs> it's Model City. That's I can't it. really think of anything. I think, like, that's probably top tier, my yeah. favorite moment, because it was just so out of the blue. But I've had really bad things happen. Like, the worst thing is, we were talking about this earlier today, is that I was shooting, it was my biggest, my biggest job at the time, and let me take a sip, I was shooting my biggest job at the time, I was in high school, I remember the day that I found out I was gonna, I was booking this, I, I was in, I was on the lacrosse team, 
and I hurt myself. Like I had a concussion, so I was walking laps around the the football field. And I remember I got a phone call from my booker, and he was like, "You're going to New York because you booked blah blah blah." So I was so excited. I have I have never felt so excited for a, a job before, and I just felt so buzzed, and I was so happy and just grateful that like nothing was on my mind except like I'm here right now. Mm-hmm. And I remember everybody on the team, minus two people, one of them being like the asshole that, ugh, anyways. So it was really amazing. But the hairstylist, he, it was interesting because he was a very charming guy. He was funny. He was sweet. Everybody loved him. He worked for the brand 24-7. Like he was like the brand's, one of the official hairstylists. And um, he just had that charisma that made you feel like, mm-hmm. I don't know, you just meet those people and you just you have like a connection to them because you're like, they're just so nice. And I remember he would do my hair and remind you, I was really excited. I didn't think much of it. I was just, you know, I was 17 and he's doing my hair and he had it in front of me. Like I have it right now. And as he was like running his fingers through my hair, he would grab, you know, my boobs and he kept doing it and i remember the first time he did it i was like okay maybe it was an accident like it's fine like he does this all the time he's a hairstylist you know his hands slip up i don't know i was just like very confused because i had never been touched by anybody in an inappropriate way on set so Mm -hmm. i didn't know what that what that was supposed to be like and so i went through a very long time where i was like is was that normal was that and the thing is like it felt uncomfortable i didn't like it and it made me feel uneasy but I also obviously wasn't going to say anything because that was my biggest job ever. And again, like he had that charisma that makes you go a little bit crazy because you're like, I don't know. And, and so it's like almost like it messes you with you. It messes with your head. Well, I'm sure if you said something, the context would make it so you were gaslit into thinking, yeah, no, that didn't happen. And the bad That's thing not what and, I did. and what made me feel even more weirded out is that I didn't have a bra on. So, I mean, I had a shirt on, but I had a bra, but it's just like that. If it, it was just too personal, it was invasive. Like it was very invasive. I felt so uncomfortable. And the crazy part is, is that last year I'm scrolling on Instagram, watching stories And I come across this one account where it's basically like this huge, long statement that somebody released where she had been sexually assaulted by the same guy. And then I'm kind of going on this rabbit hole and I found four other people that came forward. And I was like, shit, like I feel, first of all, situations like that make you feel dirty. And well, at least for me, it made me feel dirty. It felt like it fe- I felt disgusted. And so to hear that it happened to multiple people, it made me angry because I was like, one, I can't believe this happened to me. Two, I can't believe this happened to them. Three, I feel like I should have said something. And so it's like you have that battle in your head afterwards because you're like, you wish you would have said something because who's to say that that could have prevented X, Y, Z from happening to other people. But then it's like, it, you, you feel it's annoying because it's like all of the guilt should be on them but somehow it ripples down to the to the people to who, the person that, yeah yeah and you know what though it's it's a testament to how people do not understand how invasive this career path is and there's such people, a fine line between oh, things and the truth is if you don't show up with an understanding mm-hmm. of those boundaries but even so right mm-hmm. you can understand those boundaries and like you said you recognize you felt uncomfortable mm-hmm. you're in a vulnerable position yep. you're what a minor i've never mind you i've never kissed a guy never but how old were you physical like 16, with the guy. 17 i was 17 so like so I didn't know if there's what layers that so but to me i see that and it's like there's so many layers to that deeper than it being you know what it is like this confusing moment of mm-hmm. what do i say what do i do it's an invasion of privacy and it's illegal. Like it's, there's a, there's a boundary there and people don't get like when you're young and you're working and modeling, like there's so many teenage girls and young people. And there's so many things on the line. They want to be a model and they don't understand that when you're put in rooms where you are not wearing a bra, but you're dressed by somebody else or you give the power to someone Mm -hmm. else to do your hair, do your makeup, you know, put the outfit on. Essentially uh, how I, I, and I found myself a lot of times being on set where I would just kind of, desensitize myself like i would feel like a doll because there would be times where you have like three four five people on you and you just kind of feel like a mannequin you yep. everyone's just kind of like having their way with you and you do kind of get exhausted because like there's sometimes when someone's doing my hair my makeup i'm like i'm really enjoying it but there's other times where you just really don't want to be fucking touched and you can't yeah. do anything about it because that's the job it's yeah. not like i can just do everything myself yeah and um it sucks but 
I mean, it's something that I'm fine with. Everybody that I've worked with since then has luckily been amazing. That's awesome. And people will ask me or apologize. For, like the other day I was shooting and there was like a piece of thread that was hanging off the dress mm-hmm. and like Silas pulled it off and she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, you don't need to apologize. You're ripping off the thread. So I'm happy that people are being aware. I wish it was a little bit sooner, but I'm happy that the people that I'm working with now Absolutely. are very aware of these things and are very respectful because I hate nothing more than just treating somebody like an object. It's terrible. And you know, it's like we process the, the job we Mm -hmm. process the fact that when we're signing up to do this we're signing up for a certain level of invasion of Mm -hmm. our personal privacy Mm -hmm. whether that's i'm gonna go to set and i don't actually know if there's gonna be a changing room for Mm -hmm. me or i don't know if it's just gonna be a cardboard box that they put against a wall now i'm like like, uh, now i can i can take off sorry i can even take my i can take my underwear off i can take my bra off like i the fact that i have to come up with methods just in case if i have to get but naked somewhere like i I, it's like you have we're both used to it i've been get i've been changing in front of adults since i was 14 yeah it's it's that's a really weird thing to say on camera i don't even change it but it's true at that age i feel like most kids don't even change in front of their parents so it's like the people that literally birthed me um which is crazy but like i remember this one time i was thinking about this (laughs) makes me so upset i was this was a two-day job first day was studio second day was on site mm-hmm. at random locations it was a very small team it was the photographer makeup artist hairstylist and the woman who oversaw everything who was a friend of the own oh, of the brand, brand. Yeah. yeah like she wasn't even a part of it and so which i honestly think that should even be a thing that's inappropriate that is very inappropriate and you know i was a minor at the time so i was supposed to have somebody with me anyways but that didn't happen and i remember you know like with men like there's some guy or at least with me there's some guys that i just look at and i can just the energy that they're feeding off like i just makes you feel uneasy Mm -hmm. that's how it was with the photographer i just felt so uncomfortable and i was like this guy is not he's not it and i think for this one i'm i was 16 so i was a little bit younger so i was 16 and he so how like there was no proper changing space it was the studio setup was like this kind of like this size it was like a huge closet with clothing like from floor to ceiling it was insane and then like for example that doorway would lead into the studio and he would be sitting like with a perfect view of inside and i would just be changing and i would try to like corner myself but for some i was so bothered by the people that were dressed the the stylist yeah because they wouldn't let me dress by myself and i would get really pissed off this is such a random thing but like they had long ass nails and they i remember every single time i would get really pissed off when they would change because they would keep scratching me and i was too i was too shy to say anything and um i just was really irritated because it's like why can't you let me dress myself um it was the most basic clothing it was t-shirts and sweatpants and just athleisure type clothing like i know how to take clothing off without messing anything up like just let me do my thing like there's also a certain level of of space and privacy that models should have because it's like i'm not stupid i'm not gonna mess up your clothing i'm not gonna rip anything like whatever and so and not only that he kept he kept fucking watching me and i just felt really disgusted by him because he was an older guy like i'm talking like mid 40s and he kept making me very fucking uncomfortable and the second day when we were uh shooting on site we were kind of just like jumping in in the car and just jumping off from random locations and one of them was on a highway and this was in la and everybody knows that the la traffic is insane terrible and um basically because it was the highway it was just me the photographer and the producer lady because the i think it was a makeup artist she was pregnant at the time so she was like sitting inside the restaurant that we had been at with the hairstylist because it was too hot for her and she was pretty far along in her pregnancy so it was just us three but i remember the the production lady she was like this west coast type girl like very like uh, she was like in her 40s like uh, she she was like yeah i don't think we're gonna let's just make this quick so let's just change you here on the highway like it should be fine as a millions of cars are driving by and i was so so i felt so vulnerable in this position i was like what can i do to cover myself so i remember i squatted um i squatted down and i was trying to and i remember she was like you know you shouldn't squat down like you know you're used to this because we don't want to wrinkle the clothes and i was like oh, oh my god I say, imagine so- having the audacity to tell a yeah. child so on set it gets like, worse can you change in front of these strange people driving by yeah 
So they had a light reflectors and stuff, and they could have easily held the light reflector in front of me, like blocking off the, the road. And then, yeah, so didn't do that. So then I'm like crouching down and perfectly, coincidentally, the, the photographer decides to walk like over here where he can get a perfect shot of me no undressing no and i hate to be fuck uh, like cursing now but i just got really fucking pissed off i got pissed off that these fucking assholes the producer just like didn't say anything to him like you're also like a woman like if i can't speak for myself because I, I remember she was telling me that she was a mother and i'm like okay think about it in the way that like your kids might be like you know what i mean like if you saw if this was happening to your kids and you know that i'm a minor like why don't you at least say something because i'm not in a position where i feel comfortable like i just nobody briefed me about this shit and so so they were just crossing a lot of a lot of lines that day and uh, which could have led to serious trouble and i'll get to that later so oh my god so anyways he's watching me and as all this is going down as i'm changing as i'm butt-ass naked I'll never forget, like, cars were honking at me, whistling, and then this red pickup truck zooms by, filled with all of these guys in their mid-20s, like, college-type frat guys, that's what they looked like, full truck, and one of them rolls down the window and, like, kind of, like, pulls his head out the car, and he's like, suck my dick, baby, and he's, like, whistling at me and all this shit, and I remember I was felt so red, and I felt so <laughs> violated of my personal space, and instead of defending me, the producer and the photographer are, like, laughing, and the producer goes, and she's like, oh, you just made their day, as if, I'm fa- as if it was supposed to be That's flattering, disgusting. like, these are guys that are pushing their 30s, like, and you're telling me that I made that oh oh my god like what do you think that i'm just gonna like prance around like wow i'm so glad i made your day i no so that happened and um it was really bad and i remember i texted i have never texted my my management about this i texted my booker at the time and first of all this was the first and last time i i texted them this i texted her what was going down that day and as soon as i went and i finished the job i'm like crying and i was staying at the model apartment at this time and the model apartment was right next to the agency. So I just ran straight to the agency and I sat down with her and I started like getting really overwhelmed. And I was like, this is what happened to me today. And rather than her telling me, first of all, she didn't consolidate me in any way. And rather than like trying to reassure me, you know what this bitch said? She literally said, she was like, oh my gosh, you just have to get thick, thick skin. She was like, this is the age. This is this is how the industry works. She was like, if you want to keep working at this, you have to get used to these things because she was like, it's not as bad. She was like, you'll you'll be fine. You'll get used to it. It happens. You can't control it. She literally told me you need to get thick skin. A 16 year old needs to be OK with the fact that there's people that are fucking sexualizing her with her fucking tits out, with her ass out, everything. You're telling me I need to be OK with that shit are you fucking kidding me? And I remember I felt so defeated. And like I said, that was the first and last time I ever reported that some shit like that to my agency. So I can't imagine what other girls like I literally have goosebumps right now because I know that other girls have been through shit way worse than me. And in that case, I guess I'm lucky, which is also kind of fucked up to say because no one should ever go through that shit, whether it be physical or verbal or any sort of like assault is assault. And I felt so violated that day. And I think that's also why like little experiences like that is what made me scared about dating mm-hmm. and i'm happy that right now like who i'm with is amazing and he's so sweet and he, yeah like that's a whole other thing but like that also pushed me away from like it made me scared of men like, it just made me it them. just it just made me not want to trust anybody mm-hmm. And I just felt like, well, if my agency is not backing up, then I'm really fucking alone. Let's just say that modeling agencies in L.A. need to do a better job. I agree. Well, I can say I think that's a very, very accurate general statement because the industry here and there, it's like night and day. People don't know that and people that don't model don't understand that. But it is very different and you kind of i think a lot of it is perpetuated sorry, by sorry i'm not crying by the way i gulped this and it like went oh down no really. is are you okay <laughs> yeah you i'm pretty water. sure the camera probably caught me like opening my eyes <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay like that like that meme of um you know ratatouille um stop what's oh, when, the... he, when he goes yeah that's what, he, what i felt <laughs> like um but no that happened you know, i know my boy remy like the back of my hand <laughs> what do you mean remy, no, ratatouille, the that's the new models that he oh my god song. i'm so sorry by the way <laughs> 
I always told my boyfriend, I was like, there's only room for one singer in this relationship, and I'm happy it's not me. <laughs> I mean, I just want to say one, thank you for talking about all of that, because I know it is traumatic. It's necessary, though. And yeah. I feel like for me, I'm at such a good place with myself emotionally and like with my past, like the past experiences that I've had, I'm at peace with them. If I talk about it and I do get overworked up by it, it's because I'm like reliving the experience and that's bound to happen. But I'm so, so open and I try to be as open as I can be because it's important to be honest and it's important to be, tr to be transparent because a lot of people sometimes get the wrong idea of what it means to be a model or just be in a creative industry. People don't understand that it's not just glitz glamour travel photo shoots you get paid and you go home like no there some there are times where you're where it is possible to experience really shitty things yep. and it's just important to highlight that because Absolutely. a lot of people are very taboo about it it's so true i was gonna ask you what is your advice for people that are chasing the model label whether that's on social media yeah or I need to get signed mm -hmm. or sliding in your DM, my DM, anyone's mm -hmm. DM about how do I become a model? Like, what do you even think or say to that? So I would say, I know this is going to sound very cliche, but I think, and this is going to sound so ridiculous, but like being yourself is truly key. Knowing yourself, your intentions, what you want is the most important thing. Because if you go into it blindly, just like, I want to model. Okay, all right, I'm happy that you made that realization. Now let's take a little bit further. Let's talk about why you want to model. Let's think about what you see yourself doing. Let's think, of, let's think about it a little bit further than just I want to model because there's a lot that goes into it and it's not meant for everybody. And that's the thing. I feel like nowadays it's really easy to become something, but there's just some things in life that if they're not meant for you, they're not meant for you. And I definitely do say if you, whatever it is in life that you want to follow, follow that if you truly believe that it is for you. I'm a firm believer that whatever is meant for you will come your way yes i i just that's always how i've thought it's important to try things out because then you know okay i like it or i don't like it but i think it's important to just think about it in very in in depth because when i when i came to the realization that i wanted to do this i was researching left and right youtube agent i was like before I, I even signed with next i was going through every single agency i could find the rosters i was searching up girls i was trying to search up interviews like i was very in depth about my process and i feel like a lot of people just look at very beautiful successful models and they're like i want to be that but they don't really think about it, all of the extra stuff like a lot of people um like ba like when i've the times that i've visited puerto rico girls will come up to me and they'll say like because of you i'm with an agency in puerto rico and i'll be like and i'll ask them like what's it like you know i want to like get an understanding of what they're experiencing because again i'm very honest if they're going through some shady things like i'm going to tell them and they'll tell me like yeah i'm really happy that i'm signed but i don't understand why they make me pay for everything like they would make them pay for test shoots photography shoots there they would literally get paid like a hundred dollars per shoe like it was some really shitty things in their into their agreement they would make them take modeling classes to which they would pay thousands of dollars That's for not what and i was straight do, up take no i was no. straight up tell them leave them because they're not here for you first of all mm -hmm. in areas like that where it's just such a tiny tiny place little island it's already hard enough to to make things like that happen because it's not like it's not like here where you can be in new york you can be in la or you know six hour flight you're in paris or whatever you just have more accessibility here mm -hmm. and so it sucks because people don't know these things they're just, they're just so excited with the idea of it that they don't they don't look into the potential like you know what i mean like yeah. they don't look into the other things that go along with it exactly. like a lot of people don't realize that when you're staying at a model apartment you pay for that model apartment when you are traveling you know a client is not always going to pay for your travel and yeah it's just con contracts and all this stuff like these are all things that i all, no, nobody understands them in the beginning but you kind of just like learn along the way exactly but i think now because of how vocal everybody is and because of social media it is a lot easier oops it is a lot easier to find out this information so i just think that doing research and just trying it out is the most important thing but obviously safety and just taking care of your well-being is number one because i feel like if you're in a fragile vulnerable position from the jump i wouldn't say that's the right time i would say you should do it when you feel confident in yourself and you feel secure in yourself because this this is the type of industry that will 
make you question those things. Model Zitty, it's been another great episode. Natalia, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you for having my crazy ass on here. I, we need you. We I need caressed you. the mic a little too much, so I'm hoping that's not any issues. No. I was just getting a little bit passionate, okay? <laughs> I'm a passionate person. As goodness. you should, as you should. And I you know. know what? I appreciate you being vulnerable in so many ways, starting with the ASMR, which I know was very invasive. But yeah, bef- no, it was an experience. I think it's necessary no, <laughs> for, my, for my development with myself. And I'm that. glad you got to try, like, mochi. I mean, what flavors we have left we hit matcha we hit the mango pa- oh mango yeah, yeah that's okay i think it, it only serves me right because i was so passionate in this i'm gonna have some passion fruit oh so. i like i like yeah. that answer <laughs> let's do it i'm like I'm i think i have to like dig my <laughs> dig my nail into I it oh the bottom's like a little bit oh well, this is such a weird consistency cheers eat cheers okay <laughs> Mm. oh my god it tastes so good when it's cold <laughs> it's so good wait i mean look at that oh my god and the colors are insane while we're eating it's our so mochi do you want to drop your ig handle so people know where to find you or all your handles give them the socials so if anybody's curious my instagram is my name it is natalia castor calvani and um i'll have her link below yeah if you guys want to follow me on there, my Twitter and my TikTok is Natty Stellar. If anybody is, oh, that's a good that. name. It's just Natalia and then Castellar, but the name was too long, so I put Natty Stellar because that's my that's nickname. Cute. I like that. Yeah, a lot of people don't call me by my nickname, so they don't. Mm-mm. Um, that's gonna be a new movie sequel. Call me by my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Not starring Army Hammer, but <laughs> exactly. This passion fruit one is so, so good. good. And I can't believe this is vegan. I know, right? I mean, now that I've tried the regular ones, anyways, but They're this is insane. perfect for summertime. You know where to find us, you guys. Models dot that dot e. That's on TikTok, Instagram, models that eat on YouTube. Make sure you review the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe. You know the vibes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. In all honesty, I've been looking oh, forward dude. to this forever, and I love Phoebe. Well, I love you. I'm like talking to the audience, but you're amazing, and I'm so proud of you for your podcast. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so grateful that I'm on here with you. Are you just kidding me, fun. dude? Yeah. I'm. It's it's beyond an honor. I'm. This is just the beginning. I know. Let's see what happens. I know. Oh, wait. This is so I'm excited. Oops. All right, Oops. you guys. Love you guys. Go eat something delicious today. You deserve it. Go get you some wine. Go get you some mochi. Go get you a good friend. And thank you for watching us being a mess. So. Yes. You know the vibe. <laughs> you know who you're signing up for. Okay. Wait. You didn't hear me? What? What happened? I'm like spilling everywhere. Oh, my God. That was melting everywhere. I think this is like perfect to like end. Yeah. We got to go clean up. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.